different. Uh -huh. So we just are curious and, and sometimes the machines that are delivered to Russia are not quite that as so curious. Oh yeah. It's also there is a difference. So that's why we're curious to see everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The D V planners over there they don't have the DR series. Yeah. So oh, you know, we talked about maybe going behind strip till On those narrow roads. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess what? This is the planter that we variable rate seed with and everything. And we've got the hydraulic motor, hydraulic drives. And these these drives are driven off those boxes, those rate controllers over there that hook into the guidance system on the tractor. И как раз они контролируются именно системой этой управления трактором. And uh, so we we want to variable rate the fertilizer also, and we're variable rating the seed. And So we can run, we can run a two by two in in edible beans, and then it's two inches over, two inches below the seed. And на два дюйма под семечков, но it can go two ways at the same time, right here and here. It it can. Да, можно. But this this is what we do for the beans because they're a shallow rooted crop. The edible bean is more touchy to fertilizer than a soybean. Anything touches it, it's dead. So, this, this fertilizer system, this, this tube runs down in the seed furrow, the seed trench. It runs down in between the discs. And and that is is just a phosphorus product that's low salt. And we we use that uh, for corn. And when I raised sugar beets, we we used it on sugar beets. And in in the cold, литров или галлонов или как пересчитать, он вносит вот под эту под эту сашник и под эту. This is a. This will run 15 gallons per, per acre. На акр. Yep. Сто двадцать литров на гектар. And this one? And this one will run about four to five gallons per acre. Four or five. Four or five. Четыре пять галлона на акр. То есть получается четыре двадцать на акр сорок. Сто пятьдесят и сорок равно. Понятно. Под семя побольше, сюда поменьше. Да, ну я просто дифференцирована, да, то есть можно менять количество. So, so this, this one here, we'll, we'll hook up, and this, this goes to the inferro. This is the inferro system, and this is for the two by two system in the front. With the cultures. And so we, so we have our rate controllers, and I don't know exactly how it works myself, but we have the rate controllers for the planter. And then this is the rate controller for the liquid application. This is for the liquid. А это для жидкого удобрения. Дифференцирует в зависимости от того, сколько элементов в почве или от того, какая прошлая мода урожайность была. So, uh, what is your variable rate based on? On the previous yields or on soil analysis this year? Uh, previous yield. На урожайность. Понятно. Если в прошлом году вот на каком-то участке была урожайность больше, то да, он по значит меньше должен делать. So, if uh, at some plot of the land the yields were higher last year. You wouldn't use less fertilizer there, right? And, and, uh, and, uh, he wouldn't just use one year, he'd use a lot of years. I would, I would, what I would, 
Well, понятно, понятно. I would, I would compile the yield maps yeah, and layer them. <coughs> and then the high yielding spots will get more fertilizer. Но это противоречит балансовому методу расчета дозы удобрений. Low-lying area that holds water really well and holds nutrients really well. Mm -hmm. Then that high-yielding crop <coughs> took out more nutrients, mm -hmm. and then on the low-yielding spots, it's never going to hold enough water. There's not enough water-holding capability to ever raise what the the lower spot will. That's why. Ну то есть, во-первых, еще в тех местах, где выше урожайность, там растение там больше воды задерживается и там растение больше использует то что было в почве все микроэлементы а в местах с низкой урожайностью ну, практически ничего не растет там почва не ну, из почвы ничего не забирается да и растение не растет поэтому он старается больше внести туда в ту часть почвы которая способна вырасти больше семян и семян туда больше пойдет ну понятно позиция понятна вот смотри, сошник по сторону идет с удобрениями по отношению к... Yeah, the higher salt products away from there, so we can put a larger volume of fertilizer in the soil. When on the strip hill, we don't worry about that because it's way in front of many plants, so by then it don't matter. But at plant time, it's right beside the seed, so it matters. То не важно, сколько внесут удобрений, да, но никак не повредит семенам, потому что это производится до сева. А с севом очень важно не повредить семена. Another thing on the variable rate, when we've lowered the population of seed and less fertilizer, and the fertilizer was just a savings in dollars for us. And once we lowered the population in those areas, we actually generated more yield because of the lower population. And, and the reason for that is the plants, instead of being this far apart, they're this far apart. They're not competing for the, the moisture. Перед тем как сеять, перед тем как нарезать полосы, он почву как-то обрабатывает или ну механически, или прямо полосы нарезает по стерне. Most of the time we just do, just just strip till. Съездим, посмотрим. Yeah, yeah, we can go look at some corn, or we can go look at some dry beans where where we ran that. I don't, I don't grow sugar. Там вот где стерню оставлял. Where you leave the stubble? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, we can, we can.